Hey, what is good? What is good? What is good? Beautiful people, of course, you know who I be. Good Doc, Dr. Mike TV, back again. Once again, it's the classic in the making. Guys, first time to the channel, make sure you get the likes up, subscribe, notify, do all the good things to make yourself well versed in the good Doc's content. <laughs> Excuse me, I was about to let one out. Everything you should need to know about me shall be listed in the link in the description area below. Today, guys, I wanted to talk to you guys real quick about some of the unwritten rules in the Philippines that I've noticed throughout my experience living there for as long as I did and things like that. Um, this might be a continuation video because I've only got six so far, and I'm pretty sure there are so many different rules that we can always add on and tack on. So this may be a continuation video, but today I'm gonna give you six, at least six unwritten rules that I've learned throughout my experience living in the Philippines. And without further ado, I do not wish to waste your time. Let's go ahead and get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, number one, the, it's not necessarily in any particular order, but number one, do not talk negative about Manny Pacquiao. That's the first unwritten rule I tell any foreigner. Manny Pacquiao is a national treasure in the Philippines. Do not, I repeat, do not mention anything negative about Manny Pacquiao. People will lose their mind. There are some people in country that may feel indifferent about the man, but overall that man is a national treasure. So I encourage you to leave that man's name out, hit, out of your mouth. Definitely put some speck on his name and any negativity, dead it quick. All right, so that's the number one, I'm sorry, the first unwritten rule I want to share with you guys today. The second one do not, I repeat, do not drink anything with your pinky in the air. I promise you, if you find yourself around Filipinas or whatever, and you're having a dinner date or whatever it may be, or even your Filipino friends, if you drink and you think you're being sophisticated, drinking your tea with your pinky in the air, people are going to look at you funny and they're going to start laughing. I, I, I had a, def, a definitive understanding of why they did that. But I just can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it definitely has to deal with the fluidity of sexuality and things like that. I think, it, I think it's a kind of a way of somebody being gay or something to that effect. I can't remember exactly, but all of my Filipinas, Filipinos, if you tell me that reason in the comment section below, that would be highly appreciated, all right? So number two, guys, don't drink with your pinky in the air. It's really flexible looking, and they, they kind of look at it and frown down upon that particular type of behavior. All right, number three. This one I had to learn the hard way, <laughs> unfortunately, and it was super embarrassing. But the third one is do not go into areas like Davao City and Cebu and try to speak Tagalog or try to speak the national language of the country. Um, Davao and Cebu, they speak Cebuana, they speak Visayan. That's the language of the area. Just because they understand Tagalog doesn't mean that they're going to want to talk to you in Tagalog. I learned that the hard way. When I had my trip to Cebu, people were looking at me with the side eye. They would rather speak to me in English before they speak to me in Tagalog. That's what I learned. So if you're going into these different areas, I'm not telling you that you have to learn the dialect, but it's just better to speak in English. You know, I, I wanted to use it as a practice, <laughs> but that didn't really work out, nor did it turn out very well. I guess it has something to do with area pride. Cebuanas are very, very prideful. Filipino people in general are very, very prideful. So when I went there, it was kind of like, Ugh. <laughs> you know, it kind of got the stank face. So it didn't work out very well for me. So I'm just telling you right now, an unwritten rule, if you can't speak the local language or you're trying to learn the local dialect or wherever you at, guys, just just speak English. <laughs> okay, just, just speak English. Okay, moving on to number four. This one's very wordy, but I'll break it down as best as I possibly can, okay? It's very wordy, but I'll break it down. Try not to turn down your turn my bad guys. Um, number four is to try not to turn down your turn when it, try not to turn down your turn when it's your time to drink out of a shared cup. <laughs> Filipino people, when they're around their barcada, when they're around their friends, they share everything. So it's one glass that they pass around and everybody drinks out that cup. 
all right even when it comes to like bar foods and finger foods or whatever they have to eat with it it's all in like a bowl sometimes it's peanuts so the peanuts will all be in a bowl and everybody's digging their hands <laughs> in the same bowl so if you're like me and you're really uncomfortable with sharing shit like that and then you know all things considering with <laughs> the direction that they're trying to you know take the world into for some lack of a better term uh you know you're not really comfortable eating or drinking after other people now they might be your friends but y'all know the motherfuckers like that you know what i'm saying so it's kind of like when it's your turn i say try not to pass up on it but if you have to like find a way to get out of it it can be hard to deny the drink or it could be hard to, you know, say no because you don't want to seem disrespectful. You don't want to seem rude, but, you know, try not to turn down your turn. OK, I would only drink around people I trust and people I know. But, you know, sometimes you can't really uh, uh, know everybody's background or where everybody's fluids have been. So, you know, try not to turn down your turn or put yourself in situations when you're around people where that situation happens. So if you ever do find yourself in that situation, turn up. I mean, alcoholic kill it, <laughs> kill the bacteria somewhere, right? So that would have to constitute as my fourth one. All right, number five. Number five, this is an interesting one. Eating with your hands is encouraged. Eating with your hands is encouraged. Do not go to a night market looking for utensils. Like, if you're going to eat at the night market, don't go there looking for forks and spoons to eat your food with. Chances are, if you go to the right stall, it's available. But in the Philippines, eating with your hands is encouraged, like when you're out night markets and places like that. I mean, of course, restaurants, you know, people still eat with their hands, but, you know, they have utensils available. But... Because, in my opinion, the Philippines is a very hands-on culture. They eat a lot with their hands, guys. It's like, yo, dude, their 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 index and thumb is like a spoon to them. You know what I mean? Like, uh, because a lot of the meals that they eat are rice-related, or like, I'm sorry, rice-based or has rice with it. You know, they found a way to pinch rice between these three fingers and they eat it. That's literally their utensils. Now, if you're eating like a soup or something like that, then of course <laughs> a spoon or something is going to be required. But if it's like something you can eat with your uh, hands with like chicken or barbecue or like the intestines and all of that stuff, usually the stuff that comes on a stick, chances are you're going to eat with your hands. Like I'll go to Manga Inasau. And I see this all the time. It's the craziest thing. And they'll pull the chicken off of the stick, and they'll get the work, my dude. I mean, double-handed and everything, man. This shit crazy. But in the Philippines, it is encouraged for you guys to eat with your hands. And if you can ever master that shit, hey, man, when in Rome, baby. I wouldn't do that in public, like at malls and stuff like that. But if I'm around, like, my Filipino family or, you know, if I'm in a place where I'm comfortable with my people, I don't mind giving it a try. But a caveat to that. What I want to add in, and it kind of fits between the fourth and the fifth one that I just mentioned to you guys about eating with your hands and not turning down shared food or whatever. Um, they have this thing called a boodle fight. B U, I'm sorry, B O O D L E, boodle fight. Now, when they do that, that's just this big platter of food, guys. It's a big fucking platter of food. And everybody's just eating with their hands off of this thing. You can Google it. Boodle. B-O-O-D-L-E. Boodle Fight Philippines or whatever. It's just a thing where they just have a bunch of food all out on the spread. And everybody's digging in. Like, you don't pick up a plate and prepare your plate. You eat it literally off of the thing. So for myself, when I had to participate in it, I didn't have to. But when I did... What I did is I cut out a section for myself, and I just ate within my section, man. I grabbed everything that I wanted, put it in my section, and I didn't eat anything else after that. Because once somebody's hands touched over that stuff, it kind of became a little bit uncomfortable. So I didn't worry myself with that one after that. So, you, you know, prepare your little area. If you have to participate in these activities, prepare your little area and, you know, stay in your area, man. Stay in your zone, man. Don't go outside your four blocks and you'll be good to go. All right. So the last one I want to talk about, number six, number six, number six. Um, this is one that I think is like something we normally do. OK, this is something we normally do, but a lot of people don't think about it. But you should never shake hands with your left hand. Never shake hands with your left hand. Now, every time I approach somebody, it's always my right. And it's always been my right. Like, in my mind, I've always extended my right hand to people to shake. Now, 
this is interesting because I learned about shaking hands with the left hand and what it actually meant a couple of years back when I was doing some research and it sucks because I'm a dominant left-handed person. Shout out to all my dominant lefties out there, lucky lefty in the building. Um, I found out about the reason why. <laughs> But it was more so something that was related to the Middle East, and it kind of just transitioned itself into, like, Asia, too. Um, in the Middle East and in places in Asia like the Philippines, you guys know that um, without being a graphic as I need to be in order to get this point across, you guys know that, you know, <laughs> there's not a lot of toilet paper available in country. So apparently the left hand was designated as the ass wiper. And I want to leave it at that. And that's in like the Middle East and other places too, that left hand is your designated ass wiping hand. <laughs> so that's why it's not encouraged for you to shake hands with your left hand, people. It's not encouraged, it's actually, uh, people will look at it differently if you extend your left hand. I've seen that happen in Asia. I've never extended my left hand, but I've seen it happen. And like I said, when I traced the origins, it came back to like, so it's a, a trend in the Middle East or something like that because where toilet paper is lacking, the left hand is designated for that. So they kind of look at the left hand as the dirty hand, you know, and for you to extend your dirty hand to somebody, it's like a sign of disrespect, you know? So that's just something that kind of came through in passing as I was doing some stuff. And that's when I realized that Okay, man, I'm glad I've never extended my left hand to anybody, and I know why I will never extend my left hand to anybody. So, this has been the Good Doc 666 Unwritten Rules in the Philippines, guys. There are more to come, I'm pretty sure, so this will probably just be part one of a video series, and as I think of more things that I think are valuable to you guys and things that I think you guys should be able to benefit from, I'll definitely make sure that I add them in. All right, it has been fun. It has been real time for the Good Doc to go and get to get. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all take care. Y'all stay blessed. Doc is officially out, at least knuckle, but I love him, which means I am going now. Bye-bye. As always, love you guys. Sincerely do. Mahakita. Mabuhar. Peace.